Pretty amazing, right? I was unharmed in this demonstration because water has a property called high specific heat. It absorbed all the energy from the flames, effectively providing a barrier to my skin. So let's have our notes out and ready. Let's learn more of the details as to why I was not hurt in this demonstration and let's win some thermochemistry. Before I get into specific heat, you have to understand units of energy. The easiest way to illustrate this is if I take a ball that has a mass of 100 grams and I move this thing across one meter, I've just expended one joule of energy. So if I do that 4.18 times, two, three, four, point one eight, I've just expended 4.18 joules of energy, which is equivalent to one calorie of energy. So if somehow I could bottle that energy up and then I transfer that over to this one milliliter, one gram of water, if I could take one calorie and send it over to the water, it would raise the temperature of the water by one degree Celsius. That's known as specific heat. Specific heat is the amount of energy that it takes to raise a substance temperature one gram of any substance by one degree Celsius. Water has a high specific heat. It's quite difficult to heat up. It takes forever to heat up water because it requires a tremendous amount of energy, 4.18 joules or one calorie. On the other hand, you have metals at the bottom of the list. Metals have a very low specific heat and they're quite easy to heat up. Everyone understands this intuitively because if you put a blowtorch to some metal you put it in the flames or something, you wouldn't want to touch the metal afterwards because it's extremely hot. Metal heats up really quickly. Here's a classic scene from Home Alone that illustrates how metals have such a low specific heat. They're quite easy to heat up. We can see here Kevin has rigged the doorknob with a booby trap and he put a heater on it so it ends up burning the burglar's hand. And he has uh, thwarted the home invasion. Kevin is a beast. He's a boss, a mastermind. Good stuff, Kevin. The high specific heat of water also plays a role in real estate. Here's a map of San Clemente, one of the most affluent areas in the whole entire world. And it's not like you're paying for the house itself. You're not paying for the four bedroom, three bath house. The reason why the homes are so expensive is because it's right there next to the ocean all this blue stuff around me. The ocean absorbs the heat and it keeps our climate stable year round. Let's compare this to Las Vegas. Las Vegas is landlocked. There is no ocean water surrounding it to absorb the heat. So this results in extreme weather conditions. You can see there during the summer months, it reaches highs of over 100. And then at night, the lows are like in the 40s because there's no ocean water absorbing the heat, so this results in extremely poor weather. As a result, the houses are also less expensive in Las Vegas. Specific heat plays a role also in popping balloons. Here's a balloon without water in it. It explodes instantly when I put a flame to it. Here's a water balloon, and it can withstand the heat because again, the water is absorbing all the energy, so the balloon does not pop instantly. And keep in mind, this is shot in real time too. It will eventually pop, and here we go. So it explodes, but you can see there there's a huge difference when there is water inside the balloon as opposed to when it's just air. Uh, with the other balloon, it popped instantly. This one withstands the heat because water has a high specific heat. All right, so that does it for part one of thermochemistry. Make sure you check out part two where we learn how to calculate calories inside a food sample. Make sure you do it, otherwise I'm going to crawl through your computer screen and then make you do your homework. <laughs>